teaching in the home, as we studied last time in 2 John, but it's also in the church, right? Amen. Church, yeah. and, and he establishes a, a watchword this time around. What, 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 what did you see the watchword as being? Witness. 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 Love. Witness. 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 And, and, and as, as Christians, he, he's saying, and for those who he was writing to, <coughs> is that, that there's more than required of you than just showing up. Isn't it? Amen. What, 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 is, what is being a witness tell us that we have to do as believers? You got to tell somebody you about tell somebody it. About you got to testify. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta walk the talk. Yeah. 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 And and yeah. not only do you have to testify, which suggests that you gotta say something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you also have to be a testimony, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. What is that saying to us? Walk in the light. <laughs> <laughs> walk, walk, walk in the light? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he says, you know, you have to report it. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, uh, you have to bear record, and you also have to record. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being in the uh, entertainment business at one point, you know, making a record is more than just opening your mouth and singing. <laughs> in order for the for the notes and sound and all to come out and project properly, you got to have some other action going on. <laughs> Even in the studio when nobody's watching. Man, all right. You can't just sit there and sing. You you know, it requires some movement. As, as I used to say, if, if the face isn't getting ugly while you're singing, you're not singing. <laughs> you may be singing, but you're not singing. <laughs> ugly face. You got to get up. You got to put something on it, right? <laughs> So, so this, this whole thing about being a witness is more than just talking about what we say. It's about what else? How we live our life. What we do. Right. That's exactly right. And, and even, uh, uh, I don't know if it was the author or somebody else pointed it out, but even in the, in the heat of battle, you know, Abraham Lincoln pointed that out in his speech at Gettysburg. Because he said, you know, folks are not going to remember what we say here today. Right. Mm -hmm. But they'll never forget what was done. Mm -hmm. what done. So that doing part is, is important. Amen. Easy to talk to talk. Yeah. But circumstances will change your attitude about how you walk. And your heart has to be ready too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Snake. Another book over 
Oh, he doesn't. He's using mine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what was John trying to remind? <laughs> what was John trying to remind the readers? You know, he said it. In, said it in just about all of his epistles, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he's saying, in spite of what you see, the gospel hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. Just, just remember where you were in the beginning. Because the, the word has not changed. Remember what Christ has done for you and that he remains as the truth. Amen. He is the truth, isn't he? Amen. 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 Let me ask you this. Are, are, are all Christians a witness? No. No. Well, good or bad one. Yeah, they should be. One way or the other. Can't avoid it. 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 It just they just don't do things that you know and believe are in the word. Straight up, their habits, the way they live, it's it's not it's not hard to see. Self-centered rather than God-centered. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's important. The truth. I mean, our, our call to duty is to live and represent. The truth. And, and that's what John is pointing out to them because, you know, they're, they're being bombarded and, and misdirected by their leadership. And, and, and John was seriously concerned about that. And, and in his approach in reading uh, John 3, his whole approach is, is focused on First of all, leadership. Amen. Yeah. He three, named three people. Three people. Yeah. And, and they all represent some measure of, of leadership. Yeah. I mean, the masses can be completely misguided by who's at the front. I mean, we, we just look at the news every day. Yeah. There are people making great personal sacrifices for what we know to be, based on comparing it to the word, to be complete untrue. There she is. Now, the, the first uh, leader that he focuses on is, is Gaius. What kind of leadership does he provide? Encourager. Even yeah. Huh? Encourage. Encourage. Positive. Yeah. Positive. Encourage. Yeah. Next one was diatrophies. Dictators. What was it? Dictators. Dictators. I mean, we're going to obviously get into this, but you run into folks like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, not in any of them. And then after he goes to both extremes as uh, examples of leadership, <laughs> so the last person he, he uh, focuses on in terms of a leader is Demetrius. Right? Amen. And how did he use Demetrius in this in this letter? He's faithful. Model. Yeah, he's the standard. Yeah, standard. Uh -huh. yeah. If you want an example, look at me. Look at me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's that's really kind of the attitude we all should have. Isn't it? Yeah. Is, is I need to move you. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's the attitude we all must have. <laughs> They, they, they talk like that. Right. 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 Right.
So we, we're all supposed to be standing something. We're supposed to be, you know, setting the example. Wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. What a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's holding Demetrius out there as a standard that you don't necessarily have to stretch to get to. You know, because he's comfortable in his skin. Yeah. It, I don't know about you, but it was difficult for me to ultimately get comfortable with being a servant of God. Mm -hmm. Because the world around me was challenging that, you know. Everything it has to say about being that kind of person is all negative. Yes, sir. That just sparked a thought that came to me yesterday when I was working with a contractor doing some work in my house. Mm. He said, I don't go to church. It's, it's came up out of the blue mm. because of people like this one person that I met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said he, he was, uh, he, 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 this, this is exactly what he did. He was like this. His head was up here and he was looking down at things. And I, it was, it was like he, he, he wanted to take me out and, and, and do something for me and use that to leverage a lower price out of the work that, that I was going to quote for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, he used that to say, and that's why I, my, my mother's Catholic. She goes to church all the time. She makes me mad. We are her all the time. But it's this guy is the kind of guy that I, I hate to see. And he didn't use the word hypocrite, but I mean, I, I, I was feeling, that's what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, naturally took a moment there. There was some watering that needed to be doing, done. And the Holy Spirit, thank God, gave me the right words to say to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, it's just when you said that, it just sparked it. Just yesterday. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so in, in the case of, uh, of what John is trying to point out is, is that, look, guys, don't, don't lose track. Don't be, don't be taken in by what you see. Yeah. And even what the leadership is saying to you. Because you know the truth. <laughs> You know the truth. And, and, and I'm going to roll out for you my game plan. Uh, first of all, he pointed out what his challenge was. At, at least in, in, in my reading of it, he pointed out what his challenge was. But what did you see? Did you happen to see anything related to that? To me, he's saying that, you know, I know that I'm dealing with and that you are a part of a culturally different group of people. Remember, they, they, they're, they're living in a Greek society. There, there's some things I read that they're, they're somewhere near, near Ephesus. What a blessing. Oh, isn't this place, right? Rain. Yeah, the rain. Rain brings you out. Just gave away the last book I had, but we're on uh, uh, Third John. So he's saying, you know, this is you're living in a culturally different society, and as a result of that, uh, the people who are in charge of the church, who are now giving you bad information, they're probably not sensitive to the fact that I am a direct connection to the living Christ. You know, they, they don't understand this apostolic assignment that I have. And, and therefore, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to twist the, the truth in a way that fits in with their cultural background. I mean, you've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it comfortable for them. You know, it, it's almost like, to me, it felt like he was writing to a group of folks who were saying, man, we're listening to this guy from, from Judah? We're Greeks. We want, I mean, what, what does he know about it? We're, we're the intellectuals. We don't have to. He doesn't really know how to, how to do this. 
And not only that, but, uh, you know, we don't know anybody assigned to that church that he's reporting to <laughs> in Israel. I mean, doesn't, doesn't it feel like, I mean, that's, that's what he's up against. Okay. You know, the, the pressure of the culture around you can twist you, can't it? Yeah. Yeah. You, you ever been in that kind of environment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, growing up, the, uh, the boys and girls who were not <coughs> brought up right will they induce you into taking a puff on this cigarette? <laughs> yeah. Have a little yeah. drink? It's pressure, isn't it? Yeah. Cultural pressure. Oh, yeah. or, or, you know, the folks who get the fancy cars and the big houses and sharp dresses and all this kind of thing that they get it all by doing uh, unscrupulous kinds of things make you want to be a drug dealer <laughs> if, if, you, if you're uninitiated uh oh we got to add chairs thank you lord God is good all the yes, time. He is. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, one, he is. One quote I, uh, I saw said, Imagine Christians believing in Jesus but know nothing about his followers or their teaching. Mm. You know, they believe in the icon mm -hmm. but know nothing about mm -hmm. what he's done or what others have done to, to remain strong in, in that. Yeah, I, I tend to believe that a lot of the folks that are out there on the field of battle right now on with this ISIS organization, mm -hmm. or people like that, who, yes. who see this thing and mm -hmm. Lost. just want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Sucked in. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what John is, is pointing out to, to the believers uh, that were part of his group of churches. Don't get it twisted. The truth, as you knew it, remains the same. Doesn't change. One quote said, our religion is working for us. Why do we need to listen to some guy from Judah? This is what the leadership, this one guy we're going to talk about, that's what he's saying. And, and the way he treated John was a clear example of what he felt, right? Amen. So John's had three strategic moves in his letter. With Gaius, as we talked about, he, it's all about speaking to the leadership. Somebody read verses 1 through 8 of John 3. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health. As it goes well with your soul, why rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Mm. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers. Strangers are they, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You would do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God, <clears throat> for they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to su support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. Hmm. So John, once again, starts it off by establishing a foundation. Right? All he said was, the elder. <coughs> and, and we talked last time about what that a title, elder, represent. <clears throat> he wasn't taking a a, uh, a tyrannical position. A po it wasn't a power play. It's just saying, look, I'm connected to the truth. Y you know, and uh, just as I spoke to you in the last letter I sent you, I'm writing again to remind you that truth still stands. And he's also saying to, to Gaius that, uh, you know, you, you are a, you're really important to me. 
you know, you, you're at the, <coughs> you're my balancing wheel. And, and, and I don't just love you emotionally. What does he say? He said, I, I love you in the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's putting it out there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I love you in the truth. You, you are my anchor point in this otherwise confused environment. You're part of the leadership structure that's important <coughs> to me. And so, so he's kind of, he's kind of making sure his, his boys are, are anchored properly before he shows up on the scene. It's kind of important to get a sense of what the battlefield's like before you get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what helps. Alone, that's right. I, I would imagine that many armies have been lost because they didn't do that. Hello, Custer. How <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> And, and, and it, isn't that, doesn't that hold true for, for us in terms of uh, missionary assignment? I mean, we, even though we know that there's a need for uh, missionary work to take place in a given area, there still has to be some work to mm. before you go rushing in there. Oh, yeah. and, and the most important thing is to, is to make sure that somewhere in there the truth lies. It just needs to have a little water for it. Mm. That, to me, it's kind of what uh, what John is pointing out, and he, he doesn't just hang it out there. He he goes right into uh, the elements that are important inside of the life and activities of Gaius. First of all, he talks about his spiritual health. Mm -hmm. yeah. read, read verse two again. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Mm -hmm. It's already good for your soul. You, you've already demonstrated that. <laughs> and, and, and not only that, but we all love you in truth. <clears throat> your spiritual health is important. Physical health is, is great. What do we do to keep that going? Exercise. 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 Yeah. Eat right. Eat right. Mm -hmm. Rest. 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 Pray right. Pray right. Pray. Pray. What about your spiritual health? You got to pray. 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 And our exercising of our spiritual strength is more than just taking it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. When you, when you mentioned missions, you made me think also that he's recognizing that uh, Gaius is in a, in a place of danger, and uh, he's recognizing him as a partner in the ministry mm -hmm. and, and being concerned for both his spiritual and physical health. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because when I, when I show up, things going to start happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm going to need some boys around me that I can depend on. And he's, he's going right at the things and the elements of strength that are found inside of his. That's important to know. Isn't it? I mean, have you been empowered just by someone telling you what they see in you as being strengths that are important? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had it happen to me at times when I was down thinking that, man, I was not relevant at all. Amen. And just on a dime, yeah. I'm picked up and made to feel like I can, I can run through that wall. <laughs> That's what our relationship as believers, as John is speaking to it, as believers, ought to be about life. <coughs> Knowing that we, have a, that we are empowered by the word of God, by God himself. He's not speaking to me. I would listen if he did, but he's not speaking to me. But I know what he wants out of me. Because I know the truth. Mm -hmm. 
And John is saying the same thing. You know, don't be taken in. Because you know the truth. So a balanced life is, is a healthy and happy life that honors God. That, that's, that's the goal for building up our spiritual strength. You know, building up your physical strength is, uh, is kind of honoring who I can impress in, the, in some cases, and you know, gym, and build up your muscles, and all that kind of thing. Which is not, I mean, I'm not down in that. But in the case of the spiritual strength, it's going toward being strong enough and uh, healthy enough to do the things that will bring honor to God. Second thing he pointed out, spiritually you, you're solid, man, mm -hmm. is that your life has given a testimony mm -hmm. that said you on, you're on target. Mm -hmm. Don't let me down, man. <laughs> Without saying it, you, you're on target. And, and to those who are reading this, that they understand that he's not using Gaius as a leverage, as a tool, you know, to, to build up his strength. He's using him as an example. Mm -hmm. You know how some folks write these things and, you know, point out other people as a way to, to motivate you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not using it. He's not using it that way said that Gaius walked in the truth. And, and, and he pointed out that uh, I've been told that by other people. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice when other folks talk about how you talk about you to others about how you are walking with God. That's empowering it for the Lord. You know, in some cases, you, you probably get embarrassed when other people say, man, you know, I heard such and such about what you're doing for God. Because you you suddenly feel like, you know, I don't want this thing to turn into a, a prideful thing, you know. Because that's not what it's all about. There are some folks who suck it in. You know, oh, yeah, more, more, more. more. Stop talking. Stop talking. Bring it on. <laughs> but it's good to hear that kind of testimony. And, and that's where John is masterful. That's, that's what he's doing with Gaius. He says, you know, they talk about you. <laughs> and they're saying that you walk in the truth. Says that number one, you you know the living truth, mm -hmm. who is Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. Says that uh, Gaius, uh, they say that you get the truth from the Word of God. So so he said, you know, you're in the book, and I'm not measuring you by your ability to quote it specifically, but the mere fact that you you spending time in the book. He says that you understand that what's inside of you, the Holy Spirit, is teaching you all the time about the truth. <coughs> and he said, therefore, with all of those things happening, obviously this is not in the scripture, but you know, it's just the sense you get out of when you when you're looking at this. That makes up the statement that you're walking in the truth because you're doing all of those things. You know, leaving little kids and you tell them, son, you're doing a great job. Well, really? What did I do? <laughs> you didn't get in trouble. <laughs> you know, show and tell. <coughs> so John, John is, is walking him through it. You know, you're not just an empty suit. You're not just somebody I'm going to use as a to kind of get get everything set before I get there. You're the real deal. Third thing he talked about in terms of, of Gaius is that he had a practical ministry. Well, what did he call it? Fellow helper. Fellow helper. 
interesting word. How do you think you felt about it? Go ahead. No, it's just an interesting, interesting word. Right? I, I had to read it and go back and read it because I had seen it used before. But uh, that's, it's tough. I mean, it's for me. Yeah. Uh, to, to reach out to some people, but easier with others. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously easier to reach out to believers. Yeah. But to non believers, it's tough. It's not, you know, it's, it, even though, you know, as we mature, we get better at it. Yeah. Thank yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, <coughs> the Home Depot clerk who said, I needed that, praise the Lord. Right. Or, or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. Or the gentleman yesterday who I said, hey, don't judge everybody by that one guy. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> but, uh, but it's easy, or I, I believe easier as you, as you mature yeah. in your faith. That's right. That. That's right. That's right. Hmm. And, and, and it's, didn't you feel that, uh, that he was putting everybody on the same level? He didn't say, my fellow helper. He said, "You're a fellow helper. Yeah. You know, you, you're. We're all in this together. There's no, there's no hierarchy here. Yeah. You know, our mission is the same. None of us will get there. I mean, some of us will get there before others, but ultimately, the goal is the same. Yeah. All pushing against the wheel in the same direction. Yes, sir." Mm -hmm. And that's to represent the truth, which is God. And 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 where he was going with that was was counter to what he said in Second John about you know don't hang around false teachers. You know those those folks that are coming into your house and wanting you to put them up because they know that's the attitude of believers. You know, he just told them that, right? Now he's saying, because you know the truth, you live by it, you're walking it, then you know the truth when it comes to your door. And so you are functioning as a fellow helper. That, that's, a, that's important. You know, for, for those ministries that are not uh, ringing bells and whistles and things are turning because they they have all the attention. You know, there are some ministries that are working uh, on the ground level that never get those kinds of accolades. Yes, ma'am? Are you going to say something? And, and so, so those folks need the presence of fellow helpers, right? And he said, uh, in the case of gas, he said, you know, you, you not only open up your home because when you see the truth coming, but you also open up your hand. Mm -hmm. Because those folks don't get the kind of support and visibility and all that other stuff that attract the wannabes, and they need your help in order for them to keep ministering the truth. And by and large, and I, you know, I'm probably guilty of it too. You overlook those folks. You know? mm. The little preacher that's on the street corner trying to, mm -hmm. when, when, you know, when you see the truth, when you see one that's truthfully doing God's work, that's what he's pointing out to, to get. You're a fellow helper that way. You you bring, brought them into your house. Gave them what you need, gave them your heart, mm -hmm. and put something in their pockets. Because <laughs> you, know, you know, the world is not going to help you. And if you can't get anything out of it, the world's not going to help you. Any thoughts about that? I do a sidebar. Sidebar. Yes, sir. Sidebar. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. You did raise your hand. I just don't know. No, no, it's. Um, you were on the road, so I didn't want to add on that fear. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about a man who was uh, who was robbed, who was injured, mm -hmm. virtually disrobed, and there were significant people in the community who stepped over this man and continued on their way and did nothing. Mm -hmm. 
people who would who should be bringing the message and probably brought it you know on Sunday morning yeah mm. but he was still there and they kept going <clears throat> and you might know the man Gene because there was another man who you wouldn't expect to stop who mm. stopped yeah and treated his wounds and took him to a place where he could recover and left some money mm -hmm. as well. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I keep thinking about that as, as you talk. Mm -hmm. You know, you have that parallel going. Mm -hmm. And yes, we talked about the guy who was small in his knowledge of the word and has a ways to go before he can deliver that word. But the man, that Samaritan that we're referring to, um, mm -hmm. taught us all a lesson. Yeah. And taught a lesson to those people who are significant, who know better. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Should know better. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's preaching this morning. <laughs> but, but, but you, you I mean, you're absolutely right. That that is the truth. Mm -hmm. you, you know, as we talked before, it, it's all about what we can do to the benefit of others without having a measuring parameter to it. We just do it because there's a need for it to be done. <coughs> and John is saying, you know, the truth of the matter is you do that. What, what is the, uh, what's the motivation for that kind of ministry? Mm -hmm. Where you're doing everything that we talked about. We're doing what the the Good Samaritan did. What, what, what's the motivation for that? Honor God. Honor God. Honor God. Honor God. Please, Honor God. Please God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it worthy mm -hmm. unto God? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at our mess, he doesn't. Great on the curve, does he? Thank goodness. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if, if, if you, you know, if it's deep in your heart, it's. It's where you know the truth to be inside of God. It's done. One quote said, we are never more God-like than when we, when we are found doing something for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, folks are, are, are quick to identify what they perceive to be a sacrifice. <laughs> what is really just a convenient move. <laughs> you know, and, and real sacrifice costs you something. I mean, it's not measured in how big it is. I had a conversation with one that talked about sacrifices when you're in bed on a rainy morning like this. <laughs> It, it don't want to, All right. you know, when everything inside of you is saying, uh, don't move. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And you get up anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, that's, that's putting it on a, you know, I believe that rings a bell. You know, when you just, and, and if it uh, happens to you like it does for me, when it's over and done, man, I feel so great. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Again, it's the strongest <laughs> problem that I had. Oh, right. problem. <laughs> no, I just I heard this directly from somebody that I know knew very well. That I said, I think I found my gift. Mm -hmm. I think my gift is aiding the elderly, visiting the sick and the shut-in, mm -hmm. and writing those cards that I send out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't drive thirty minutes to see her mother. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. True statement. True. Mm. It's not a true statement. It's mm. true. Mm. And I hate to admit it, but it was in my family. Mm. 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 And and Christian speaking mm. young lady. Mm. 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 Give too much here, but but that's uh, I, it, it. Took a hard. It took a, a minute for me to roll that in and try to understand it, unravel it, and, and, and address it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it just, you know, it's like balls sitting up on the tee, you know, I, I got to hit it, you know. <laughs> 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 That's right. Yeah. Try to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and 
in doing that kind of ministry work, we're being obedient. I mean, we're demonstrating that, that we are obedient to to the Word of God, and that's a that that's a uh, that's a preaching moment for those who are unbelievers. You know, because they're watching us. They're watching to see what we'll do. And and okay, take care. And they're, they're especially watching to see what we do when it has a connection to another believer. Right? And, and that's, that's all wrapped up in this thing about being a fellow helper. John's pointing out that, you know, people are watching what you do in support of your brother. You know, we, I, I heard the pastor at the end of the last three sermons on, on, on Sunday ask for a special contribution for whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I think about Tuesday of that week, he sent out an email saying that the response of the church not only met her need, it over, it over, mm -hmm. flowed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and and I thought of the relatively little bit that I put into the yeah, yeah. times the congressional <coughs> congregational support times three services, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how easily that added up to not just enough but more than enough. Yeah, Everybody. yeah. And I'm saying we ought to do this more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We ought to do this more often. You know, we make the connection anesthetic yes. by putting all our money in up front and yeah, yeah. the church manages those Manage it. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that it, you know, that if mm -hmm. you're in dire straits, you can come to church and there's a mechanism, you make an application. And somebody, some unseen person decides whether you right. get what you have to. And that's, the, and that's the bureaucratic way to handle it. That's right. And the old folks' way to handle was, was the whole place. Right. That's right. That's right. And I'm just, yes, I know, I, I read that email, and I just yeah. I just felt wonderful. Rejo you know, I rejoiced at the response of, of the brethren. Mm -hmm. And we need to have more rejoicing like that. Yes. When, yes. when there's a need, we need, to, we need to hold a plate. That's wonderful. And by all of us doing a little bit, we can meet, yeah. we can meet need. And the contribution yeah. is the way everybody feels. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. When, when they, they read, yeah. the, read the result. And to me, that, that builds more Christian character than a diaconate fund. Yeah. No, I'm not knocking, you know, yeah. 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 the period. Right. 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 But, but, but it we, we did the same thing yeah. earlier at a prayer breakfast where we um, collected money for Deborah Gibbs' daughter, who was ministering to young people in her classroom and in her environment mm -hmm. and so there was even more immediate gratification because we sat there in that session mm -hmm. counted the money and then gave the feedback and then wow yeah. somebody decides I'm going to try to increase this mm -hmm. to a maximum number mm -hmm. of 500 by giving a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. you know, and that feeling of satisfaction that you have not used a corporate structure, but used the old school, if you will, the um, Christians to support and help individual hearts were helping others, which yeah. was, yeah. you know, so gratifying. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's what John is pointing out here. Mm -hmm. it, as we get ready to go after diatrophy, he, he's saying, you know, your your fellow helping activities of giving, you, you, you know, he, of giving to those itinerant ministers is making a statement to other believers as well as those who don't believe, mm -hmm. because you, you're doing it out of your understanding of the truth, right? He, he, he's saying. You know, I, I recognize that it's easy for you to, to not welcome false teachers into your house. Uh, I know it's easy for you to, you know, to uh, singularly, as you're pointing out, uh, collect something for the whole and divvy it out 
which is probably what diatrophy <coughs> is doing. But it's an even bigger deal for you to open up your home to those who you know are delivering the truth. Give them your heart and put something in their pocket. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a celebrating moment. And, and it, it's, uh, it's also indicating that you are standing on the truth. Remember now, he's talking to Gates. His boy, when he gets there. <laughs> and, and then, which takes us to the second part of uh, John's strategy, is he took on the problem, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Somebody read nine and, verses 9 and 10. And wrote to the church by Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with us. <laughs> so if I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, gossiping maliciously about us. Not satisfied with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to do and puts them out of the church. Mm -hmm. He took it on, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he, he, he took it on. He, he, John is saying, you know, I'm not pulling back. You know, I wrote them one letter, they didn't respond to it. I'm writing another one. And not only that, but I'm coming. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he took it on. And uh, he wasn't going to take it on through somebody else. He faced it head on. That, that's, that's a critical step in mm -hmm. e Even today, because, you know, you can be summarily put out if, if, you, if you proceed to be going against the grain. Mm -hmm. And he said... It, it's, this structure is, is set up that way, whether it's obvious or, or, or shielded in some way, because I won't be the boss. Talking about the, the other things. That's, that's his whole attitude about it. I won't be the boss. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what's usually motivating that kind of behavior? What, what usually motivates somebody to operate that way? Whether they're aggressive or passive. Pride. 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 Arrogance. Arrogance. Yeah. Arrogance. Got it all. I know it all. And, and, you find some kind of, sometimes insecurity. Inse mm. yeah. Good one. Insecure. Anything else? The fully honest. Napoleonic. <laughs> yep. Little structure for the tall mind. <laughs> Sometimes there's psychological issues which are manifested in in uh, physiological challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know, but you know, to to be so obsessed for that hunger and for that need and mm -hmm. you know, to be first and always in charge. Yes. There's, Something, yeah, yeah, something's wrong. A disconnect. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. And, and John is kind of saying, you know, this guy, diatrophy, he's, he wants to be above Christ. Ugh. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that, that's essentially what's being stated, right? If you're not functioning according to the truth of God as you know it, then this person is, he's superseding the word. Mm -hmm. And at, at the end of the day, uh, our mission is to do good for others, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just as you were talking about, uh, what we call the feeling you get from doing good for others out of no, with no goals associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the heart, I, I firmly believe at the heart of every person, there's a, a desire to do good. In yeah. some in some measure, yeah. mm -hmm. and if the opportunity to do good is presented in a way that uh, allows them to whatever rationale they have for, for doing good mm -hmm. to plug in, they feel better. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Some folks who are like that will never let you live it. Uh, forget that they did something good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But that it, it, you've, you've touched something in them that, that 
that satisfies a, uh, an innate desire to want to do good. I, I, I believe that. This personality ultimately leads to a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Personality like doctrine leads to a problem. <coughs> what kind of problem usually comes out of it? Discord. Yeah, discord. 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 Yeah. yeah. Anger. Anger. And all of the stuff that ultimately grieves the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, because believers can't just sit and endure that for a long time. You, you know, you, you'll end up with folks spinning off boards and getting out of the deacon ministry and because, you know, we can't, we can't deal with that. Yeah, there'll be an undercurrent. That you... That's the other thing. Folks will start submarine. Yeah. Whoever that one. <laughs> and and there's a whole another group of folks who who will do what under those kinds of uh, dictatorial leadership styles is this dodge. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Just, just cower too. Just cower down. Mm -hmm. Just get quiet. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm only going for the word. Get my field and go home. Sunday with the same Christians. Backsliding. Huh? Backsliding. Backslide. I don't use that word very much, but. Uh, but you know, uh, in, in that very environment, though, where people are starting to have discord and breaking away, this kind of, quote, leader can emerge and want to appease everybody and start to take on this very personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And yes. people often I think don't want to be a source of conflict. They know they see things like this happening, but it's like if I speak out I'm gonna be kind of labeled as you know, the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have a contentious spirit or yeah, yeah. whatever. And so right. we tend to mm -hmm. because become peacekeepers rather than peacemakers. Sometimes yeah. you've got to break what's there That's right. That's to get right. to go forward. That's right. And it causes, it can cause problems, but the hope is that after that you've got a better thing in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And, and as we read in, in his other letter, Second John, we are to contend for the faith. Mm -hmm. We aren't supposed to just sit there. Because this guy, Diotrephes, demonstrated all of that in his attitude. Mm -hmm. Right? He uh, rejected John, wouldn't receive him, lied on him, all, all the stuff that you just talked about, lied on him, turned on all of his friends, said, you know, if you're hanging out with him, you just like him. And then he, he didn't just turn on him, but he punished him, didn't he? You know, thought, uh, called him all kinds of not to their face, of course, but call them all kind of names, you know. Uh, putting you in a certain group category of, uh, oh, he's one of those. I mean, that, that can happen. Even in a little small groups, you know, if you're oh, yeah. in the choir or any place. Yeah, absolutely. Where there's a structure approach to it and you got a, a, a uh, person who is overly controlling is this they'll start creating little boxes. Put people in little boxes. John is saying that that I'm getting at that grieves the Holy Spirit. That's not what we're here for. We're here to strengthen each other, lift each other up. Because we are supposed to be reflecting the truth of God. Not our truth. One quote said, church dictators are dangerous people, yeah. <laughs> but they're easily recognized. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they thrown out of the church? Some cases they are. When, what was the question? When, when the, why aren't, why aren't they thrown out, out, the out of the church? Mm -hmm. when, the, uh, when the truth seekers around uh, require a, 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 a change in direction. Uh, some of them get the message and some of them don't. 
And, and in the case of John, there's, a, there's an indication that he was trying to really come back to demonstrate love out of challenging God, to bring him back. Because he'd obviously gone too far. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I went back and forth at the bottom of that paragraph you started where it says church dictators are dangerous people. Yes. The last sentence says the tragedy is that these dictators actually believe that they are serving God and glorifying Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I said, really? <laughs> yes. I, these, these are grown up folks in most cases. Yeah, yeah. They really believe that? They really yeah. believe it. So I, I just left it alone after <laughs> going through it. But I, 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 how can they believe it if they read the same words I do? Yeah. Because right, Satan is a deceiver. That's, that's right. <laughs> well, I, 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 so I left it alone. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I was, you know, and deceiving uh, himself. We talk yes. about the sincerity of people. You can be sincerely wrong. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they recognize it as sincere as they are. Some people think that they're faith is so pure mm -hmm. that everybody has to do it the way I do it. Yeah. And they, they're very sincere. Very. Yeah. Extremely. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but they get this attitude that you, well, oh, you, look at all of the, the, the different beliefs we have within the denomination. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're very, some of them, I'm, I don't doubt their sincerity. Yeah, yeah. But there's, for me, it's in, you're just sincerely wrong. Yeah. You know. But I, I see how people get caught up. I absolutely do. Caught up with their beliefs mm -hmm. through their their filter. It's a narrow filter. Yeah, and that's yeah. where they are. That's right. that's right. And they import that, export it to you. And if you don't accept it, then you have to move <laughs> because their way is the only way. Yeah. yeah that's a good example of that. Right down here, we were going on an outing toward the pastor's church. Uh, and there was a church sitting right here that said Greater Macedonia Baptist Church mm -hmm. and right across the street was the Greater New Macedonia Well, the well, reason that we're talking about I mean, yeah. I, I heard the story because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, that's, uh, that's awesome and the, uh, the, the thing that's important is that, uh, as John is pointing out, is that this personality is, is that readily identifiable because they, they most of the time will talk about themselves and their accomplishments for God. You, you know, they, they, uh, they do it in a way that, you know, is unnecessary if you're doing it for God. Ooh, are these yes. are these guys different? These people different than the Jim Joneses and the leaders who send their congregation, you know, like drink this stuff and they'll put to heaven. Are these people different than like the cult leaders, or are they basically? Well, they probably started out like this. You know, they start out in the word and and really teaching the word, and then they migrate. You know, and to a level like this guy Diotrephes probably. Is. And then the next step is, you know, they want to create their own world so they can become God. And when it blows up, you know, they got nowhere to go. That, that's why, uh, you know, I, I forget who it was. I think it may have been Pastor who was talking about the fact that uh, if your end game is to ultimately do the work and satisfy the will of God, you never find yourself running out. Mm -hmm. If your end game is to become the, the best uh, salesperson on the team, what happens when you get there? You get bored and looking for something else. But if your end game is to do the will and purpose of God, first and foremost, you never run out. You always, the enemy has no has no uh, avenue of attacking and destroying your life. People like Jim Jones and those guys, they ran out because they were at the end of the rope and, uh, and they, they fully bought into the fact that I'm God. And so I'm out of here and I'm taking all y'all with me. <laughs> 
that, that's that's kind of my take on that. Uh, so in closing, in John three, he ended his letter with uh, with encouragement. Didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. he offered a warning to Diotrephes, you know, as we should offer him by our lives a warning to those who who may be coming against us, who may be wanting to change uh, uh, the truth. That we know the truth, and we're going to defend it. He offered peace to Gaius and Demetrius, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You guys just take it easy. You, you, you're there. You're anchored. And uh, and in his last two letters, it, it was great because he, uh, chapter two, he wrote to a godly woman with a warning about false teachers and he did it brought it to their attention because he said they're coming from without trying to get in uh, the author said they use love to deny the truth this letter he's wrote he's written to a godly man about his church and, and the upside down structure of the leadership. You know, being a minister means that you are a servant, yeah. not a dictator. You're a servant in somebody else's business, by the way. This guy, this person, that kind of personality appealed to the truth in order to use it to, uh, to attack the brother, by twisting it. John warned that dictators inside of the body of Christ is a cancer that will ultimately destroy. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Don't miss anything. Yeah. Any other comments? Anybody want to say? All minds clear? All minds clear. Amen. 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 Well, let's, uh, let's gather over there and uh, close out the prayer. And let's see. Uh,